Can you see me over this? I'm tiny. <laughs> so, uh, my name's Sean, and um, I run a site called Letters of Notes, which is, as you can see, um, a website about correspondence that I believe to be uh, deserving of a wider audience. Um, a little backstory about how I started it. Um, back in 2009, um, I was working as a copywriter. Um, and uh, I was meant to be writing an article for a client, a stationery company. Um, and I decided to, to write one about letters, interesting letters. I quickly realized that there was more than enough um, on the internet already for me to start a website and make some money out of it. <laughs> so I, I, I said sod off to my, to my client and wrote them something really horrendous um, about photocopiers. Really boring, <coughs> really boring. Um, and started letters of no instead. Um, So, the premise is very simple. Um, the website's just full of letters, telegrams, memos, and faxes, nothing digital. Um, I just wanted to kind of celebrate um, old school correspondence, anything that's physical that you can pick up, um, anything you can get some kind of tactile feedback from. So emails are out of the question, tweets, Facebook messages, um, purely physical correspondence. Uh, as I said, began in September 2009, so just over two years. Um, and there's letters from all sorts of people, from all different walks of life, from all different eras. There's um, soldiers, slaves, movie stars, musicians, authors, fans of movie stars, musicians, authors, not slaves so much. Uh, <laughs> soldiers, there's a few fans of soldiers. Um, there's the, the, all, all sorts of letters um, from all, all manner of um, situations. Letters of advice, letters of complaint, letters of love. Letters that will make you cry, laugh, um, scream, uh, become delirious. There's letters on there that will make you do all of the above uh, within the space of a couple of minutes. It's incredible the, the, the power of the, um, the written, written word. Um, and it's doing really well. Um, I've been running it for just over two years, as I said. Um, at the minute, we're getting between two and three million hits per month, which for a, for a website about letters, I think, is pretty incredible um, in, in this day of, day of age. Um, and that's my full-time job. Um, I'm writing a book about letters of note. That should be out in November, all being well. But it's, it's, it's an it's absolute pain in the arse. I'm getting all the permissions for the book, because I need to get permission from the person that wrote the letter, the person that owns the letter, to, to include the picture in the book. Um, so I need to, it's just horrendous. I, I won't bore you with it, but um, I, I, I'm on, on the brink of tears um, <laughs> constantly. So that's what I'm doing at the minute. Um, why are people? Why do people love it so much? I think it's just um, it harks back to the to, to the uh, what well, seems like a more innocent time. Um, just just looking at the stationery of these letters, there's some beautiful letterheads. Um, you don't quite kind of these days we get excited when you, we choose a background for our Twitter profile. Uh, back in the day, you, they, the people used to go to the trouble of having a, a letterhead designed. Um, just looking at the pe people's handwriting, I try to include a picture. Whenever I can get an image of the letter, I include that on the website as well. So you can see the person's handwriting, you can see how hard they've pressed down when they've been angry. Um, you can see the type of paper they've used, little fingerprint smudges. Um, there's just so much character, far more charming than looking at an email with them. Um, just, I mean, what's the, what's the most exciting thing about an email, aesthetically? Um, the signature? I, I don't think so. Um, so that's why I think it's so, Popular. These are little nuggets of, of history. Um, some of them are just self-contained stories that you know you'd find in a book. Um, and people can just—they're kind of bite-sized, bite-sized look, look at history um, that you can just kind of read on your lunch hour. Uh, what I want to do is, is just um, if this works, that's the same. Oh, there's over 700 pieces of correspondence in total. It, I've, I've lost count to be honest, and I, I've forgotten to update the archives because uh, I'm so lazy. But it's over 700, which in the grand scheme of things is nothing. Um, if you consider that someone like Charles Dickens, I think um, there's it, it, like 15,000 15, of his letters um, have been kept. I'm, I've got 700 of everyone's letters, which is, which is actually pathetic. <laughs> I, could, I could maybe reach, kind of, I reckon by the time I die, I might reach about 5,000 letters, which is still a third of Charles Dickens' uh, entire um, correspondence history, but um, I'm going to try. 
So this is, the, I'm just going to show you a few of the, I think the best thing I can do to explain the site is to show you a few of the letters. This, as you can tell, is, is from Disney. Um, and it was sent, just forgive me, there's so many dates to know that I'm, I need to use these cards. Nineteen thirty-eight. <laughs> this this letter was written, um, <laughs> um, and it's very charming, isn't it? Lovely, lovely letterhead. Um, I can imagine opening this letter and being completely um, charmed by it until you read the message. This was in nineteen thirty-eight when things were things were different, um, when sexism was rampant and entirely acceptable. This is a rejection letter to a lady that applied for a job in the animation department. And Disney got back to her, they sent her this letter and said, sorry, you, you, basically, I'm paraphrasing here, it says, uh, women um, aren't allowed to do any creative work um, at Disney. You can, however, apply for a tracing job. So, you know, so you can't put a foot wrong, basically. Which I just thought was amazing. That's the first letter I ever put on, on Letters of Note. Um, and the, the response to that was amazing. Um, and that's kind of what made me stick with it. Uh, if you rewind about a thousand years, this was ninth century. Um, it's in Chinese, as you can see. I don't know Chinese. I'm just going to tell you what it says in, in, in English. Um, it's a form letter, um, and it was written um, for the benefit of local officials in the, in the city of Dunhuang. Um, and it just blows my mind. The f it was a form letter, which means this must have been happening quite a lot. And it was given to local officials the morning after they'd been too drunk to behave themselves at official dinners. <laughs> and it says, I'll read this out. So after, after embarrassing themselves in front of dinner hosts, they'd copy this out and then sign it and give it to the, the, the hosts that have offended. Yesterday, having drunk too much, I was intoxicated as to pass all bounds, but none of the rude and coarse language I used was uttered in a conscious state. <laughs> the next morning, after hearing others speak on the subject, I realized what had happened, whereupon I was overwhelmed with confusion and, re <laughs> and ready to sink into the earth with shame. <laughs> ninth, ninth century. And that's a that, it was happening so often, so often that they had to, they had to put out a form letter. This, um, I don't know if you've seen this photo before, it's quite a famous, famous photo. That's John Lennon, obviously, on the left. Um, this was taken um, on the 8th of December um, in 1980. He's signing a copy of his last album, Double Fantasy, um, for the guy on the right. A few hours after this photo was taken, the guy on the right, Mark Chapman, shot Lennon to death. Six years later, a memorabilia expert in the US received a letter that's on my site. He received a letter that said, how much money could I get for a copy of Double Fantasy, the album, um, bearing in mind that it's been signed on the day that um, Lennon was shot. Um, by the way, I killed him. And he sent this letter. Can I get a drink? <laughs> <laughs> Lips are sticking to my teeth. <laughs> really underprepared. Um, cheers, mate. I can barely speak. Thank you. Smooth. <laughs> so yeah, he'd been right. Six years after shooting him, he sent him. He sent this memorabilia expert a letter saying, "I've got, I've got this letter, this um, album signed, just hours before I shot him. How much money can I get for it?" Which is just incredible. In fact, there's a letter. If I'd pressed this correctly, there's his letter. You can't read it anyway. <laughs> slash. Everyone knows Slash of him at least. Um, Guns N' Roses uh, guitarist. Uh, when he was 14 years old, he wrote this letter to uh, a girl he'd been seeing. <laughs> he's drawn a little cannabis leaf there. He was already, <laughs> already smoking weed. And uh, a, little, a little portrait of himself. He had big hair then as well. And he hand wrote this letter. He was 14 to his ex-girlfriend called Michelle. It's basically, she basically just split up with him. Um, and he's saying in the letter, I'm sorry, I didn't realise I talked about my guitar so much. So she, <laughs> she'd, uh, she finished with him, she finished with him because of his excessive 
um, speak of guitars. <laughs> I don't know, do you remember Ren and Stimpy in the 90s? That was a huge cartoon at the time. Uh, this little guy, this, this young lad called Amir, um, in 1998, I think it was, he wrote to the guy that um, came up with Ren and Stimpy and animated it, uh, John Chris Walewski, I think he's called. Um, he wrote to him and said, I'm an aspiring animator, I'd love to do this uh, when I'm older. Can you give me some kind of feedback, some kind of advice? And John Chris Walewski came back with an eight-page letter this is just two of the pages, obviously. Um, illustrated our pictures of Ren and Stimpy, pictures of how to draw. Just really beautiful, uh, lovely advice, really friendly, there's a few swear words in it, you know, just really, really kind of chummy. Um, I put this on my website um, back, I think it was 2010, end of 2010. And the response was so good, I got millions of people looking at it in the space of a few days. Um, I don't know if you know reddit.com, really popular website. Um, it got featured on there to the point where John Chris Falewski, the guy that created Ren and Stimpy came online and started answering questions about the letter and about animation and stuff. And that was kind of <laughs> like a crowning moment for me. And that's when I realized that maybe this website was, um, you know, really worth sticking with. This is a man on the moon, if you believe that he did actually land on the moon. <laughs> um, Back on Earth, um, the Nixon's, Nixon's people, Nixon's staff, were prepare, preparing for every eventuality. And his speechwriter, Bill Sapphire, wrote Nixon this memo, sent him this memo, headed, can you read that? It's headed, In Events of Moon Disaster, and it's basically a speech for Nixon to read, should Armstrong and Aldrin become stranded on the moon. And it's just completely chilling. At the end of it, it's, it's a couple more pages than this. And at the end of it, there's instructions on how it should be read. You know, you've got to look solemn kind of thing, which you would be anyway. <laughs> um, I'll just read a bit of it. He says, um, fate, just imagine this being read out. Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it still gets me every time. Marilyn Monroe. Uh, in 1952, she was 25 years old. She, she hadn't peaked in terms of popularity, but she was still, she was famous. She went to um, hospital to have her appendix removed, and she was so paranoid. I don't know why I'm laughing. She was so paranoid that when they wheeled her into the surgery, they peeled back the, the, the gown uh, to you know, begin, make the marks, and, and cut her open, basically. They found, they f they found uh, a letter attached to her stomach. She'd, she'd written this letter... Um, in her bed and attached it to her stomach for the attention of her surgeon. <laughs> and it said, it's tragic, it said, um, cut as little as possible, for God's sake, doctor, no ovaries removed. The fact I'm a woman is important to me. Oh, God. She was so paranoid about something going wrong um, and not being able to become a mother, she wrote a letter and attached it to her stomach for the surgeon. It's a downer, isn't it? <laughs> uh, just to end, I'm, I'm just going to... A few telegrams. Uh, I mean, tel telegrams were like olden, olden days uh, Twitter, basically. <laughs> it was restricted. You had to pay per word, so telegrams were deliberately short, as short as possible, so you didn't have to pay as much to send them. Um, there was even... Uh, there was a language called telegraphies, which was shorthand telegram speak, so you could get as much into, into a telegram as possible, just as we use, well, some people use lol speak, whatever it's called. <laughs> but Peter Sellers on the left there, you must know who he is. Uh, he's pay, played Inspector Clouseau in Pink Panther, he was in Doctor Strange Love, he was one of the goons. Um, he was at home one day with his wife, and uh, he was upstairs in his study doing some work, and his wife was downstairs in the kitchen, and the doorbell went, she went to the door, and it was a man with a telegram. And she, <laughs> she took the telegram, closed the door, turned around and had a look at it, and it said... <laughs> said, uh, bring, bring me a cup of coffee, stop, Peter. <laughs> Who was upstairs, as I said. Um, <laughs> which, is something, which is something I've done, actually. I've, I've texted my girlfriend and said, can I have a biscuit when I've been sat next to you on the couch? <laughs> but he was doing this way back with telegrams. Far more elaborate. 
That's not the actual telegram, by the way. I've, I've, I've made that. And speaking of the goons, Spike Milligan, his, his cohort in the goons, uh, comedy legend, um, he, he, him and Peter Sellers were always trying to kind of get one over on each other, uh, trying to wind each other up. Um, and one day he, um, he sent a telegram to Peter Sellers. Peter Sellers was n notoriously quite paranoid in general. And he sent him this. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to be patronising, but that, there was no first telegram. <laughs> and apparently it took him more than a few minutes to, to click um, that it was another, it was another joke. Uh, Dorothy Parker, this is the last one. Dorothy Parker, she was a famous, um, uh, a famous writer, poet, um, a, a, an American woman. Fam she was known for her wit, her dry wit. Um, she was on her honeymoon in the late 1930s. She was having a break from work, she worked really hard, and she was just having a rest on her honeymoon. And her editor sent her a telegram and said, I've got some work, could you possibly do it? Just this once. And she sent him a telegram back. I'll read it out just in case. Too, f too fucking busy and vice versa. Six words, just perfect. Um, and and that's, that's my talk. Is that like six minutes or something? And that's it, I'll leave it. I just want to really want to leave that there. That's why I did it last time. <laughs>